you need to sell some of them. You're wasting all your time and money on models. Paint what you have. Hello, everyone, and welcome to Model Club TV, episode 102, or 102-102. As always, my lovely co-host, Scott Johansson. How are you, sir? Great. Great. Okay, show's you? over. See you, everybody. Bye. <laughs> Bye. See ya. How are you, Scott? Great. Really? Fantastic. Okay. Happy to be here. <laughs> uh, all right. Today's episode is all about the jerkiest producer in the hobby. We got to get that out of the way. So stay tuned for that. Uh, no, no, no. It's about the biggest jerk in the hobby. Oh, that's me. Wait, no, 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 no. No? Okay. No. All right. So let's do a model club poll. Who's a bigger jerk, me or Jason? <laughs> Nothing will be held against you. I wonder if we can. I wonder if we can actually put a poll down. <laughs> I think we can. You, I might put can that in the, the comments. I'll figure it out. Can in the Facebook thing, I think. Yeah. So. Who's the bigger jerk? Anyway, no, that's not what we're talking about. We have a weird episode this time, uh, because of time and plans and stuff happening this month. So this is going to be a very short episode. We have Mike Swistack coming on to talk about his thirty-one days. Thirty-one days. 31 heads of Halloween. Uh, and we recorded this couple episodes, so he's a little bit ahead of where we are. So if you want to check him out, check. I'll put the links down below. But Mike Swistack over on Facebook, you can follow along his sculpting challenge that he does every October. But we'll talk to him right here in the beginning after we do a little bit of housekeeping and then go into the rest of the show. Scott, news, anything? You all good? Good. Okay. Uh, Scott is traveling at the end of the month. And I have been traveling now. So this episode is going to be short. We don't know currently if there will be a second episode this month because of what's happening. We're going to try and squeeze something out at the end. <laughs> but if we can't. Yeah, that'll, we, that'll help your hemorrhoid. Yeah, I know. Yeah. Oh, dude. <laughs> Stay tuned for the bloopers. The, um, it's, there's just, I don't know. And then we have my birthday that same weekend. You're gone. I don't know what's going on. So there may not be an episode at the end of the month. So bear with us, everyone. And I will have some unboxing videos coming. But other than that, uh, I think we're good to go. Scott, news, anything? No. <laughs> let's, let's jump into giveaways. Let's just do our giveaways right away. Get it okay. out of the way. And these are your giveaways. So which one would you like to do first? Let's do uh, two heads are better than one. Two heads are better than one. Here we go. Donated right. by our friend Paul Gill. Yes. Uh, anything else special you want to say about this before we? Two heads are better than one. Okay. All right. Here we go. I'm shuffling. Tell me when. When? Spinning. Spinning. Two heads are better than one. Ron Joseph. Ron Joseph. Ron Joseph. Ron Joseph. Now, Ron was a winner not too long ago. But I want to just really two heads, so that's going to you. I want to reiterate rules. I'm not saying that this is nothing's wrong with this one, but Remember, if you win something, sit a couple out just so we know. I don't feel like having to keep track of that. So please, if you do win like a couple times, let other people get a chance. But Ron Joseph, congratulations. You're getting the, the, what did we call it? Did you remember the name? I don't remember the name now. <laughs> but whatever, he entered, he's getting it. You know what you're so. getting. All right, next one. Next that, one. He's, he's pretty close, so postage isn't too bad when yeah, I send good him. That's for you. All right, the next one. And he's already in my computer, so I don't have to ask him for an address. <laughs> this one. Here we go. The Santa. You want to give a heads up on the Santa? Heads up on the Santa. Uh, I haven't started casting him yet, but I do have the giveaway one. I would like one as well. You'll get Please. nothing. <laughs> okay. All right. I see how it is. I see how it is. I see how it is. You know what I wish you would do? I wish you would get rid of the thread that's hanging on your fucking neck there. What are you okay. 
Where? Oh, that's your headphones. Okay. Oh. Oh. <laughs> well, what? All right, tell me when to stop shuffling for. No, there's still something there. What are you talking about? This? No, other side. Turn. Other way. There you go. I don't know. Maybe it's just a shadow. Could be a shadow. Probably, probably rogue beard hair or some shit. <laughs> what are you talking about? Never mind. But... All right, whatever. Here we go. All right. Now you're shuffling. all blurry. Now you're back. Okay. Shuffling. I'm shuffling, Scott. Oh, shuffling. Good for you. Stop. Spinning. <laughs> oh, my God. We're off to a great start here, everyone. And the winner. Yeah, tattoo. Look there, at man. this. Ron Joseph won again. Not possible. <laughs> We're removing him. You can't do that. All right. Shuffling again. He can't win Spinning. two things in a row. Spinning. Boom. Here we go. The winner for the Mike Parks re-release. Darth Cleveland. Darth Cleveland. Is that Brian Clark? I think I'm like, so. well, we'll see. All right, Darth Cleveland is the winner of the Santa. Fantastic. Everyone, thanks for uh, donating, Scott. Thanks to Paul Gill for donating that. And thanks to you and the other people over there at the Mike Parks Restoration Project. That's there a good you go. name. You want to steal that from me? Mike Parks Frustration Project? Not quite. Not yet. Mm -hmm. Maybe soon. You never know. Mike MPRP. Sounds pretty good to me. Ah, all right. Giveaways are done. This episode's giveaway. You got something you want to give away, Scott? Yeah, I didn't put a picture up. You'll have to find one. Um, Pestilence Labs. Um, do you not? Would you want to wait on this one? Why? I don't know. Since you don't have the picture or you don't have the kit in front of you, you can find it. Okay. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> what do I care? I don't even want to be here. <laughs> Pestilence Labs, uh, sculpted by Jeff Yeager. Um, body snatcher. Body snatcher giveaway, everyone. Where's Karloff? Is a body snatcher. Pictures right here. Body snatcher <laughs> right here. All right, to uh, win the body snatcher, what do they got to put in the comments? I want to snatch your body. <laughs> okay, I want to snatch your body to get into the body snatcher giveaway. Here it is. Hey, I, right. didn't, I didn't tell him to say, I want to snatch your body, Scott. Okay. <laughs> All right, First, and I then our second you. giveaway this month. So we have two, some two, two really good ones from Just Paint It, Jerry Fraid. Read what that says: one eighth scale baseball furies. So I'm gonna open this box up real quick. I have not opened it yet, and I, ooh, he has everything wrapped so nice. I am not gonna take this apart. I'll put a picture up here for you, mm -hmm. but it is the one. Look, expertly packaged, like beautifully packed. So I am not touching that because I will screw it up. Um, the one eight scale baseball fury from Jerry Fraid and just paying it. Thank you so much. So to win this, it's a home run. No, something better. Do this. Tell us who you think is going to win the World Series. There's Ooh. four teams left. What we are the four Cleveland, teams? Let everybody know. Cleveland Guardians. Okay. But if you say Indians, we'll give you two entries. No, I'm just kidding. Um, Cleveland Guardians, New York Yankees, New York Mets, or Los Angeles Dodgers? Who's going to win the World Series? Padres are out? Padres are out. Okay. All right, let us know. Or you don't even watch baseball. You don't care. Say, I hate baseball. That works, too. Some sort of sure. baseball comment. <laughs> we'll get you right. Just say, hey, baseball fury. Right. Like, Jason could say, Scott hit a home run with my mom. Ah, uh, yeah. Or say the White Sox are the worst team in the history of baseball. White Sox are yeah. the worst team. Yeah. All right. So we have those two awesome giveaways this episode. Two, I seriously, two really good ones. So please, here's your chance, everybody. Good stuff. 
All right, let's get into uh, news and reviews after we talk to Mike Swistack. So we're going to throw Mike in here at the beginning. I shot this a couple days ago with Mike. Uh, I love Mike and Squid, two really, really, really good people. And he was, I think, four or five, I forget how many days into his uh, sculpting challenge. But here you go. If you don't know Mike, a great dude. Every Halloween does a sculpting head challenge. Every day he sculpts a new head um, quarter scale. So check it out. Here's Mike. I'm not allowed to do interviews anymore. This fucking guy. Take me out of the interviews. This fucking guy. <laughs> we'll see you in a minute. All right, everybody. We are back. And we have Mike Swistack with us again. How are you, sir? All right, Jason. How you doing, man? Oh, Thanks for having me back. I'm doing very well. It is good, good, good. It is uh, Halloween. Well, it's October. Let's say that. Yeah. And I mentioned the last time we had you on that you do your 31 heads of Halloween sculpting. Yeah. Like, what do you, is it like a marathon, a contest I, for yourself? It has to be an endurance run more than anything. Uh, and I thought it'd be cool to have you back, show people who are new listeners, new viewers, what you do every October, and then just kind of, you know, just do a little update and see how things are. So 31 heads of Halloween, man. First of all, where did you get the idea? How did it happen? Oof, I mean, it's been like, I guess this is the eighth year now. So basically when I stopped, when I, when I quit working for Harley and decided to do art full time, it was like in March. Well, after four months of doing that, I said, man, you know what? Like I could actually do, cause I always saw people doing the, the drawing challenges right, like in yeah. October and stuff. And, and over the couple months that led up to October, I'm like, man, you know what? I could do something with this. Like. <laughs> I, so that just kind of came out of that. There had been a few times where I would be sculpting and in the groove and really going and like six days in a row, I'd produce a new quarter scale head. So it kind of also came from that. Um, but it was the first year that I was doing this full time that I said, man, let, let me try it. And it was just a, basically a quarter scale head sculpt a day for every day of October. <laughs> And it's crazy. So, yeah. It's so I, my question is, are you still excited about doing it every Halloween or are you dreading it come September? <laughs> um, I do. I still am excited for it. It does stress me a little bit, but usually the only time it stresses me is because I over engineer it because okay. I want to do too many likenesses or I want to do too many large things. Like the last two years, I went back to doing more quarter scale stuff. Uh huh. And that helps a lot. It helps immensely. Okay. Um, it, it also helps that I use my own skulls that I sculpt and cast as armatures. That's what I was going to ask you. So planning and prep. Okay. So what yeah. time of day do you start sculpting? I'm uh, usually up at like 738. Wow. So normal, <laughs> normal hours. Yeah, and then you yeah, go yeah. all day, take breaks. How does it usually work? Um, well, I get up. Yeah, no, I, I pretty, when I'm doing this for the 31 heads, it's pretty much all day, uh, an all day affair. Um, I get up, I start sculpting. Um, I'll take a break to go out and do my walk, my 20 minute walk so that I don't get too fat sitting here on the couch <laughs> sculpting all day. Um, but that's kind of it. I mean, like Tuesdays and Fridays, I pack orders and ship orders. So those days I may have a couple hour laps where I can't sculpt, but the majority of the days in October, I'm sculpting for 10, 12 hours each awesome. day, pretty much. Oh my gosh. Okay. So I have on the screen right now, some of the heads you've done so far, oh, uh, nice. this, this month so far, I will show some of the older ones, but my, my big question is, do you just go in blank? Do you go in every morning with no idea what you're going to do? Kind of. Um, I, I basically, whatever is kind of in my head when I wake up, <laughs> and whatever is fascinating me at the moment usually ends up winning out. Um, okay. There is, I do have, I, I mean, I always collect photos of things that interest me. So I've got like 6,000 photos on my phone <laughs> that are in my two reference folders. That's what I was going to, okay. So that was the other question I had and you just kind of answered it. Do you, throughout the year, are you collecting, like you just said, you're collecting oh, pictures. Yeah. Do you do drawings or anything or are you just kind of. A Do little bit jump in if there's something, but mainly I just screen grab a uh, screen grab things that I like that interest me. I'll see a part of a sculpture and I'm like, Ooh, I would like to try doing that and a thing. Um, so, I mean, once in a blue moon, I'll do a sketch to try and, you know, if I have something that's just for my head that I don't have visual reference on. Yeah. 
but the majority of my reference are pictures of other people's art and and stuff that just I saw and interested me and I like. So that's a major help with the 31. If at any day I get a, all right, I don't know what to do next. I just go through, start going through reference pictures and see one or two things and decide, okay, so I either want to meld the two of them together or it just, I get inspired so easy by seeing cool stuff, you know, like I've got also a handwritten list that's got about 40 things on it that I've from a month ago going through my reference photos just so that I've got a, it's weeded down a little, Yeah, but I haven't even actually looked at the list yet. I've just been so much, so far, all nine things I've sculpted so far have all just popped in my head and then I'll go and I'll look for a reference so that I know kind of what I'm working with, but. I think it's really cool that, and some people might go, oh, well, he's cheating, he's using his skulls, but I don't think so. Because I want people to realize, like, sculptors like Takaya and Narasawa, they always had those blank, they had castings of things that they made. Yeah. And they yeah. would always bring it back and repurpose and re-sculpt on stuff. So I think that's a great throwback to that style of working on stuff. And it is such a cool project to see you working on all of these things. So, oh. so far this month, it's how many days, how many sculptures, where are we as of recording uh, today? Today is the ninth. Yes. Yeah. 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 So I've got nine sculptures done. I haven't posted the ninth one yet because I still got to make a few little tweaks on it. But gotcha. Um, today I'm actually working on like four sculptures at once. <laughs> um, number nine. These guys are little ones. These are. I don't know how, how well. Oh, let me get, let me get right to you. I'm going to go straight to your camera. Okay. There we go. All right. Yeah, you can hold that up a little closer, and I think people see it. So cool. So just a little classic, like jack o' lantern pumpkin. Yeah, that's more a magnet scale size guy, like my little strange baby heads. So today <laughs> I'm sculpting three of them because they're small. Uh huh. Um. So one is done, and two I got to work on when we're done. But yeah, so there are nine done so far. I'm working on ten and eleven, but then I've got another probably five of them that are skulls that have been dremeled down, all the detail removed, and then magic sculpt epoxy clay laid on them to start bulking up the heads and stuff. And those I've been working on since I started. So I never just have one sculpt going in a day because I use magic sculpt epoxy clay, so they need time to, to cure. So I'll have like five armatures going. So as one, if I do something on one, and I'll give it a half hour to cure and just grab another armature and start going. Okay. So. So that was my other, so it's all epoxy clay throughout yeah. the day. You're not doing any Sculpey or wax nope. or no. Nope. Oh, cool. Okay. Nope. Most of, most of my sculpts are predominantly uh, magic sculpt epoxy clay. Now I have been using awesome. a lot of magic sculpt fast even, which when I first started using the epoxy clay, I felt it cured too quick at like an hour and a half, two hours. Oh, wow. Okay. But then awesome. I found out about magic sculpt fast, which you 20 minutes, it's hard. Okay. And at first I was like, well, why would anybody need that? And now it's my favorite. I absolutely love it because I don't just put a big ball and try and sculpt something in 20 minutes with using the skull armatures. I'm just doing a piece of muscle, a piece of muscle, laying an eyeball. So especially for the 31 heads, it helps so much to be able to a half hour after I lay clay, have the surface hard so then I can go back and lay clay in another thing without messing up what I just did. Very cool. Um... Do you ever, has there been, and I don't want to bring up bad memories, has <laughs> one gone completely sideways on one of the days where you couldn't finish it and you had to oh, redo yeah. it or sculpt, oh, yeah. st start over completely that day? Yeah. Well, I never started over. It'll just get to the point where it's like, this is the pictures. <laughs> I'm hoping for this to become this, but I've got to put it down. Usually those end up going into the next day even, and I'll try and get as much done as so you could just, when you see it, you get an idea. But yes, I've posted pictures of basically just a skull covered with a skin, a magic sculpt with like two camera lenses in it because uh -huh. I didn't get a chance to get further. That's happened a bunch. That happens more. When I'm doing big stuff like this, this is this month's first one is a tar I, man. Yeah, but dude. He's a, big, he's a big giant one third scale tar man. So he's like eight inches tall. I was, oh, I didn't bring my, I was going to bring my tar man I got from you out because I saw it. I was like, yeah. oh, he's doing another tar man. Awesome. Yeah, a big one this time. That's cool. Um, so, and the other thing that happened, and I don't have the picture of it, I was putting together Warhammer figures the other day, and yeah, I happened yeah. to be putting together Plague Marines. Yeah. And it was the the Plague Marine head that I bought from you with the one horn coming out and the yeah, thing. Yeah, yeah. 
I just put that head on something and I was like, oh, this is the one I got from, from Mike. This is the exact head sculpt. That's awesome. Yep. Yep. Super inspired me. To yes, head sculpt. dude. I man, we could talk about Nurgle later, but we won't bore <laughs> everyone. <laughs> um, I, are you like this year? How's it going? You, you're still feeling it. It's early. You good? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, no, it's going good. It's going good. Um, like it, I had a, a pumpkin that I did just yesterday. I ended up finishing it was yesterday sculpt. I didn't finish it until about 11 o'clock this morning. And technically it's not finished. It's going to have a bunch more done before it gets molded. But, you know, as with life, some days, like we had a guest <laughs> last night. So yeah. four hours worth of sculpting time were taken with hanging out with a good friend that came over. Awesome. So I, I got less done last night on that. So th- things do run into the next day. But I usually, if a sculpt from the day before goes into the next day, I try and by noon, I have to put it down so that I've got at least eight hours to do on that day's sculpt. So, And this, I think, kind of leads into that. You just kind of answered some one of the things I wanted to ask. Before you do molding, do you, do you end up molding all of them? Or do you pick, like, the best 10? Or do you just kind of do them all? I used to, well, the first year I didn't mold any. I think I molded six out of the 31 the first year. They just all ended up getting sell, sold off as original sculpts okay. or kept for myself. Um, but as of the second year, I, I, the goal was to mold every single one up. But that gets tricky both in cost-wise and in the fact that almost none of them are fully finished in one day. So, But there were a few years there where I did mold up basically 30 or 31 of them. But... Then I go back and I'm unhappy because things are unsymmetrical and the sculpts aren't quite as finished as I would like. So the last few years, I probably average 10 to 15 of the 31 get molded up. And not because I'm unhappy with the rest. It's just because they're in a drawer, not finished. Yeah. I got like 250 unfinished sculpts (laughs) in my house. So um, I intend to get them done. I intend to finish them. But I, I do get sidetracked, and and the bigger ones get expensive to mold. So, yeah. but the well, intention is to do all of them. Let's take this Tarman for a second, since it was the first yeah. one, and I got the picture here. And you, yeah, how much more work do you have to do? You think on it before you would say, um, okay, this is done, done, done. Honestly, done, done. honestly, I'll probably because he's one of my favorite characters, and I, I was my favorite. If, he may end up getting another six to eight hours worth of sculpting time on. Okay. Cause I really want to go back and have the little drips everywhere on them. Um, Dude, I love his face. I got a tweet. Ah, it's, thank you. Thank it's you. So good. It's so good. Thank you. Yeah. 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 He's one of my favorite characters. So he will get a lot more love. He will. He, I mean, he's probably got uh, 15 hours sculpting time into him already okay. from the one day. And it was basically a day and a half. I was working on him. Um, he will probably be a 20 hour sculpt when everything is said. And done. Oh, wow. Oh, wow. before molding. <laughs> uh, I want to ask about this. What I didn't look up the name and I probably should have. No, it's all right. The one with the green light with the really smooth face and nose with like the triangle nose. Yeah, 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 Ex- yeah, yeah. Explain to people what your inspiration was there. Um, kind of. Uh, Wait, put that back up real quick. Throw that back. Like, yeah. There we go. Oh. <laughs> Perfect. I'm sorry. I'm not used to this nope, camera. There you're all goes. good. Yeah, that okay. one. Yep. Um, a kind of a uh, Hakater. I don't know if you ever saw it's a Japanese. Oh, yeah, yeah. Hakater. Yeah. I'm a big fan of that. And, a, and it's very, I mean, I've sculpted one of my first, the first year I did a Hakater, a quarter scale head that I got to go back and redo. Um, but that's definitely influenced by him. I just found my Hakater disc like three or four days ago. So once I found the disc, and I didn't think I had it anymore. And I watched the movie. I said, oh, I got to do something like that. So I think that I guy's... had that on like bootleg VHS from like Wonderfest yeah. or something. Yeah. I got to find that. So Man. definitely inspired by that Japanese. It like, definitely uh... looks like that. It has that yep. feel to it. That's why I was wondering. Yep. Yep. Um, yep. And then I have not seen the new Alien movie. So maybe you oh. could tell us what this one is. Oh. Um. <laughs> All right, I don't want to give no spoilers away. Okay, spoiler alert. But, if yeah, you want yeah, to yeah, see yeah, yeah. Alien Romulus and not be spoiled, tune out for one second. There you go. There you go. Um, first, let me say, I really, really, really liked it. And I didn't have high expectations at all. I Okay, let's. I had zero expectations yeah, for it. And yeah, I have not I, seen it yet, but I saw this 
creature, but yeah. you liked it. Give us your quick. Oh, oh man, I loved it. Okay. Um, I uh, just I loved it in the fact that it has to me. It seems to have such a love for basically every alien movie that's come before it because it's got just these amazing little tributes in it that uh-huh. to me. I detected ones from like every one of the alien movies. <laughs> That's really, I think what I like the most. Okay. Um, I, at first I was worried it was going to be like, like, you know, daycare in space. Cause it looks all like real young kids, but the acting was good. They didn't bother me that they were too young. I heard the Android guy did like a stellar, amazing performance yeah. as an Android yeah. dude. Yeah. And there's technically there's two androids in it. Okay. And the second Android is to kind of made the film for me. Okay. Because this is another one of these throwbacks to a past alien film, and it's just awesome, awesome. Um, <laughs> but I won't say anything more about that. Okay, cool. Uh, the creature design was great. A lot of practical effects that I thought worked really well. Um, neat, very neat, like lure change in it. Not change, but that there's something else going on with where the how these aliens are being produced, other than just from the aliens kind of, which was very cool. Okay. Uh, and then the creatures were amazing. The final creature was really odd, really odd. Um, I saw the picture of, of the real life guy that was yes. in the suit. Yes. And I was like, holy cow, how is that a real person? Like it was- yes. And God bless him. He yeah. is as odd looking as the creature. I mean, he's <laughs> an amazing, amazing physique. Yeah. Crazy. So this, I won't give away too much, but there's this creature that is kind of a hybrid of a xenomorph and a human. But in that genetic mix, there seems to be a little bit of engineer head. Like yeah. the, the thing has a very thin, emaciated kind of engineer head on a really, really exaggerated, long, stretched out, tall body. But the thing is, it's crazy, is the creature is like in constant flux. It's born as a baby, and within minutes, it's adult-sized. And as the 10 minutes, 5 minutes of film screen time it has, the whole time, it's kind of changing and growing and evolving and morphing right. subtly. So, uh, insane, insane. I need to see it still. I was waiting for it to come out to home, and then I was going to watch yeah, it. Yeah, one so more cool. week. We only got one more week. Oh, Next good. Tuesday. You know what? I'm going to put it on the list. For a yep, model in a movie, for it's out at home. Yeah, because I went and saw it in a the theater, and I had to go to the bathroom at one point. I had to go out and put money in the meter, so I missed two little chunks of the film. And of course, ah. right when we're near the end, <laughs> but uh, I loved it. I loved it. Oh, I'm this... so excited to see it again. Not oh, cool. This is a really, really cool piece. And then we got that one. And then you have a little Nosferatu vampire yeah. thing inspiration yeah. here. What do you got yeah. going on? Ah, I, I, I'm a big fan of the Nosferatu, you know. Yeah. But I, I have, I, I have a one third scale one I did, and it just, I, I had one of my armatures, and I was, I was narrowing the armature at a skull down because I was going to try and do like a female skull, and I don't know, my crazy brain looked at it, and, and I was working on bulking up the top of the skull because in the past some of my skulls were a little small on the top, so okay. I've been trying to really get a proper size cranium. And in doing it, I said to Jen, look at it. It almost looks like a Nosferatu, right? With the big, with the bulbous top of the head. If I put pointy fangs and that's it, the Nosferatu skull just strictly came out of, I looked at it and my crazy brain said, if you put big fang front fangs on it, it would be a Nosferatu skull. (laughs) Is that the armature for that skull is technically the skull bowl that I made to go with my Frankenstein bust, which was a skull that I made from scratch. And I was looking at it the other day saying, man, that would make a great armature for one of my 31 heads because it's kind of different than most of my other skulls. So so the Frankenstein skull bowl ended up getting <laughs> modified to make a female skull, which ended up becoming the Nosferatu skull. That's awesome. <laughs> let's talk about one more real quick. This kind of yeah, yeah. tentacles coming out of a skull, a pumpkin stem. I, what is going on with this? Amount? Yeah, that's Explain the, the this first- one to people. The first pumpkin I did, I think this one here, the, uh, let me get, the let me get up real close. Yeah, there we go. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I had seen a drawing that had a neat kind of skull head, fleshy head coming out of a pumpkin. Cause I'm always looking at pumpkin stuff yeah. and skull stuff. Yeah. And, <laughs> and I try and do some pumpkins each year. And so I saw a neat drawing and said, Oh, that, that's kind of neat. 
maybe let me work on something like that. So it's it's kind of like that, but different. Like the one that I saw was kind of like a head coming straight out of a pumpkin where the back of his head is bulbous, like a pumpkin head. Right, yeah. Um, but then something struck me that what if it was a Nurgle jack-o'-lantern? Dude, so that's, that's why really, it's speaking to me. That's why. Yes, that's that's what then it, it then the it started getting because we just went and bought pumpkin for Halloween to put on a porch, and we got one of these crazy knobby guys like oh, a yeah. pumpkin, but like a gourd with the knobs all over it. So I started adding some knobs, and then that knobs made me think like Nurgle pustules, and then that's how, especially the stem. Ended I love. I was just like, gonna say, I love the stem, how it just yep. kind of twists and grows. And yep, one oh, of the perfect. Nurgle horns, like from one of the uh, one of the uh, Cyclops Nurgles. Yeah. With, oh yeah. With the crazy unicorn curve. The plague horn. bears. The plague yes, bears. Yes, plague bear. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> so directly inspired by that. Oh man, this is so cool. Well, Mike, thank you. If people want to follow you and want to buy anything off of you, where do they go? How do they follow this along? Where do they see the pictures every day? Um, you can buy it. My store is a Etsy store, Cthulhu Gizzard on Etsy. Okay. okay. I'll have it up here um, down below at the bottom. Awesome. For social media stuff, I'm on Facebook and Instagram. On Facebook, I'm Mike Swiss Stack and Cthulhu Gizzard. Cthulhu Gizzard at Cthulhu Gizzard Customs. And same thing on Instagram. Instagram on Mike Lower slash Swiss Stack and Cthulhu Gizzard. Um, and all of my stuff is posted on those uh, two places every day. So I try and post on like Shiflet Brothers while I'm doing the 31, you know. Cool. Um, Do you get good like reaction that. every year? Do you get a lot of people following along? Yeah, 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 yeah. Nice. yeah. And I, I don't, at first it's like, ah, nobody cares about this no more. But then as soon as I start doing it, like no. the first day or two, yeah, I get so many messages from people saying, oh man, Halloween and October <laughs> just isn't the same without it. So a yeah. lot of times I go into it wanting to do it because it helps my skills immensely. Yeah. But I think, ah, nobody cares. But then now every year I get a, I get a great response. So, and I think as, you know, as an artist, you you want to keep challenging yourself. And I think yeah, this is yeah. a great way because it free the, the speed I think makes your brain stop and go, okay, it's just got to get done. And you yep. don't, you yep. like, it makes you think in a different way. I, I don't know how to explain it. I could, but <laughs> it'll get boring, but no, but I think exactly- everybody should try this. Even like painting models, just paint a new thing a day, try a new technique one a yep. day, yep. set a time for yourself and just force yourself to get in the studio and do it. And I need to take my own advice and get back to painting <laughs> more and less editing because this man, it's, it's such an inspiration every month. And I, I appreciate it. Just even. Oh, looking at thank some you so stuff, much. So. Thank you so much. So Mike, thank you so much for joining us again. Oh, Scott's going to be jealous. He missed you. <laughs> and squid. Yeah, and squid. Said my love. Congratulations on your hundred episodes. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Awesome job. You guys. Awesome thank job. You. Thank you so much, man. Always a pleasure talking with you, brother. Anytime you want to come back, just heads up. You know what? When it's all said and done and you want to come back and show some of your favorite ones from the month, we'll shoot another thing and oh, we'll have you back again. Do that. Cool. Very yeah. cool. All right. Have a great October, Mike. I'll see you. Awesome, Jason. Thank you too, brother. Bye, you buddy. too. All right. Bye-bye. All right. We're back. That was Mike. Mike, Thanks, Mike. Stay with us. Keep, keep up the good fight all month. And so far, the new stuff after this interview that I've seen is really cool as well. Great stuff, as always. Check out Mike's Etsy page. All the links will be down below. Um, follow him over on Facebook and Instagram. And it's, you know, great stuff to see. So well done, Mike. All right. News and reviews, Scott. Let's do this right now. News and reviews. First up. Chiller Theater time. It is Chiller Theater time. Uh this Wait, weekend, it? It, howdy doody and pre- it's chiller theater time <laughs> october 25th through the 27th uh in parsippany new jersey uh we will be sending some kits to give away for the contest here in the next couple days uh but if you're in the area or you just feel like traveling out to new jersey for some weird reason chiller theater check it out uh they have the model contest going again if you get there with your model entry you can skip the line, it, it's, and it's only a one-day thing. It's only that Saturday. So you can get it and get in and get out. But I was looking at the guest list. Tons of people to get autographs from. 
Uh, as far as the other vendors, I'm not sure who's there, but I did take a quick ga uh, gander look at the guest list, and there's some pretty cool people there. So check it out. Chiller Theater, been going forever. Ed Bokley, big time old garage kit dude. One of these years, Scott, we got to get to the um, Chiller Theater. So check it out, everybody. All right, up next from Danny Sirocco. Scott, tell us about this. So. Danny was selling these at Monster Palooza as painted figures. Um, after Monster Palooza, which I think has happened already now. Yes. He will be selling these as kits for $80 for, from Dimensional Designs. So get a hold of Dimensional Designs, Danny Sirocco, if you uh, want one of these creatures. Shrunken oh, heads. Shrunken heads. They are, it looks like one, maybe like four inches tall. Yeah, they're pretty good size. Yeah. So. Nice. Good stuff. Okay. And then from Ina over at Dyke Like Art is how I'm going with it from now on. This came out last month and I thought it was pretty cool. I forgot to show it. Or maybe I showed like a quick preview of it. But this was the final. Uh, and I was kind of upset when this one was picked again in the poll because it's been done so often. But I thought this was done really, really well. And it is. The Gary Oldman Dracula, the Gary Oldman Old Man Dracula from the Francis Ford Coppola Dracula movie. And I think it is fantastic. Uh, she with did. Mouse, uh, with the Mickey Mouse hairdo. <laughs> with the Mickey Mouse hairdo. I did make one suggestion when she was doing it to kind of press in the emblem on the uh, robe a little bit because it was sticking way out. And she did push it in a little bit. So it's not as crazy in terms of. Because again, like, it's fabric. It should look like it's part of it. And Superman logo in uh, syndrome that I hate, right? Yes, yes. very much. In the same with me, it's like tattoos on P on three D sculpted. Yeah, stuff. but I think it's great. I, it, that little shortcoming, it's. It, I think the rest of it makes up for it. I love the simple pose, just that the spiral staircase pedestal kind of pose. It's really, really nice. So head on over to Patreon. The links will be down below. Uh, I will have these for sale at some point, probably I uh, between one six and one quarter scale. I'll probably have them available if you are interested. I have no prices yet because I haven't got it together. But hit me up if you do want one. I do have the rights to sell these, so I will have that available. And then it is basically a well winner show this episode in well terms winner. of new He's releases. Boy. Yeah. So, Scott, let's start out with the Archies while I push Bart button. You can kind of talk us through all of this. So this is uh, the first in the Archies. I think they're available on his Patreon. Yes. Or they're one of the Patreon pieces this month. I think the other one was Blue and Mowgli. Mm -hmm. uh, so uh, he's going to do all the Archies. Can you name all the Archies, Jason? No, I cannot. Can you name three Archie songs? Is what? No. Is one of them named Archie? No. There's no Archie and Archies? Oh, yeah. Archie Andrew. You mean? Okay. One of the Archies, yeah. But can you name any songs? No. No. Not even a one? No. This is not a me thing at all. <laughs> this is far away from... I know no Archie anything. I'll bet you you know an Archie song. Is there a Veronica? Veronica? There is a Veronica, yeah. Okay, I know mm -hmm. that. No, I don't know an Archie song. Really? Nope. <laughs> <laughs> I, what about Sugar Sugar? You never heard Sugar? Mm, 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 That's an Archie mm. song? That's an Archie song, yes. Okay, I did not know that. I just thought it was a commercials. It was like a, something in a commercial. You're an idiot. Anyway, so there will be Archie, Reggie, Veronica, Betty, Jughead, and hopefully Hot Dog. Oh, I know Jughead. I know Jughead. He's got the hat on, right? Yeah, he's also known as Mark Worthling. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Up next, then we have we have. Uh, I, I like that he's doing this when he does the wacky racers cars. He does a separate, um, like driver maquette. Okay, so he did the turbo terrific um, a little while back, and this is the driver of the turbo terrific, Peter Perfect. Cool. And um, you know. It's again, he nails it. I mean, I don't know what yeah. else to say. Then this is a 
I, I had a little hand in this. I'm not going to lie. <laughs> oh, did you? Okay. I didn't know this. All right, go ahead. I had a little hand, and I've been bugging him to do this for a long time. Okay. And the reason being is no one ever does classic superheroes, with the exception of Tony. Yeah. Okay. And uh, I I love the thing. And, and I kind of wanted it kind of based on a George Perez look. And uh, I think he did a pretty good job on this. Yeah, I think it reminds me a lot of the Toy Biz piece. It is. It also has a little, a little bit. bit of the Bowen pose to it, yeah. too, but, you know, not totally. Um, I, I, initially, like, initially he had teeth in there, and I said, take the teeth out. It don't look good with the teeth. Yeah. Um, and uh, the light, the street street post with Yancey Street was my idea as well. Um, but... Uh, <laughs> Why Yancey Street for people like you? You know, there there was an ongoing joke in uh, the comics early on. The Yancey Street gang was, you know, Uh, his like little comic foil in the um, in in the comics. So, um, you know, and then I don't know if you noticed the cross street Winter Avenue, uh, Best Way STL, yeah, pretty good, Best Way STL. So that was a little, you know, plug for himself there. I like it. And there's the parts breakdown, which is cool because I hadn't even seen the parts breakdown yet. Um, I have it, but I hadn't seen it yet. So um, it's, it's nice. I hope he does more of these. Is he? Do do you know something? I don't know anything yet. He's he's doing so much that it's. But I'm gonna tell you, this kid knocked this out quickly. Yeah. Okay. I mean, it's. So um, I have this. I can sell it. Um. Not the STL, but I can. Yeah, if you need a I print can... of the thing, hit up Scott. Hit up Scott. Yep. Okay, the next thing is this is the Anti Mob um, car. This is the bulletproof bomb. And he has released this prior. But <laughs> again, per my suggestion, okay. Um, when he released this prior, he didn't have the guys in the car. I was going to say, look at them all packed in there. <laughs> well, that's how they were. That's yeah, how it yeah, was. I love it. And so, um, now he has, you, you can get the characters all separate, but this is them all packed in the car. Yeah. And, um, you know, because if you want to print all these, it would look silly if one didn't have them all in the car. So, yeah. um, Again, a little suggestion of mine, but fun. All right. The Hair Bear Bunch. The Hair Bear Bunch. I don't know who these guys are. Maybe someone can clue me in. But they're part of the Hair Bear Bunch cartoon. One guy kind of looks like me, a little fatty. Um, <laughs> but um, I guess it goes with the other Hair Bear, the Hair Bear Bunch piece that he did. Yeah. So, uh, and again, beautifully done. This this kid can knock this stuff out beautifully. And then you have some upcoming from his stories. So they're not the best quality pictures, but. No, these speaks. are in progress photos. Yeah. And this is the converted car from Wacky Racers. And, um, and then the Professor Pat Pending. Which is, you know, when you look back at the 60s and, and these cartoons, just the. The stuff that they put out, the the clever names like Pat Pending, okay, because you'd see that on a lot of toys and stuff yeah. like that. Pat Pending. So, and this guy was an inventor, so Professor Pat Pending. That's great. And name. the converter car would turn into other things too, but this was the basic converter car right here. So, uh, and uh, cool. I'm already on the list for that. So. All right, and then I found just in from CA3D, he had a bunch of really cool stuff last in this month, and this is an Alice in Wonderland that they did have the rights to as well, um, but really cool Alice in Wonderland piece. You know and what I then, like about it? It's not over the top. It's risque. exactly, and it's okay. I love that it's perfect, and it's just a creepy girl in the normal Alice in Wonderland dress, like you said. Not sexual, not anything. I mean, just, yeah, I love it. She doesn't have big giant boobs. Right. Okay. Perfect. Her ass isn't hanging out. Right. 
And there's so many ways you could paint this and light it and do like this is painted like the mushrooms are glowing. I think the render is, but you Mm -hmm. could do that. You could cast those in clear, not cast them, but print them in clear. You could paint that mushroom any way you want. I like that. It's so simple. And the pose is like just perfect and just real simple little piece. And I think it's really well done. Uh, This piece, do you know who this is, Scott? No. So this is the complete opposite of the last piece. (laughs) We're super sick. So this is Madeline Pryor. This is for your comic book people. This is the clone of Jean Grey that became the Goblin Queen, apparently. You know, I I don't know anything about it. I stopped by that. Okay. So I, but I wanted just, this is, there is no way in hell. This is one of those, just because you can, that if you were going to print that in one six scale, that throne of rocks will be ridiculous. I already saw people talking about how they would be FDM printing it. This is something that you almost got to just do small. Cause if you're going to do this quarter scale, there's like, there's no way. It would just. Take hey, I'll, I'll say it's a nice skull. Oh, it's awesome. If so, if you keep zooming in, I mean, that face and that hair, I think, is just fantastic. And the boobs look normal. They're not like. They're laying properly, if that makes sense. It's not like a big, like, comic looking person. No, but they're not small. No, they are not small <laughs> at all. But it, I just, I love the pose. I love the face. And I just wanted people to kind of see some of the. The two completely opposite ends of what you can do with uh, 3D printing and sculpting. So, um, other than that, Scott, you got anything else? Did you buy anything? You get anything in the mail? No, I still have my Revenge of the Creature that I haven't opened yet. <laughs> uh, and I, um, oh, I did get something in the mail. What'd you get? What'd you get? Hold on. Now, when I was a kid, over the course of my childhood, I probably had about three different ones. Okay. Oh. But this was the original one. And this is a repro that they're doing. And this is a Corgi Toys Batmobile. But it's a repro of the original box. Is it a harmonica? Okay. It looks like harmonica. No, it's a um I'm gonna, I'm gonna go in just on you when you get your kit when I get it up. Okay. So it's a repro of the original box, which you could display the car. Oh, wow. I like that. (laughs) The originals had gold. Yeah. Hubcaps. The later ones didn't. Okay. And the original one didn't have a trailer hitch on it, where the later ones did. Go up a little bit and towards. There we go. Okay. The original one had a trailer hitch. But when this this rolls, there's a little flame that comes uh, in and out there. Okay. I used to take the figures out and play with them. There's a little blade thing inside of here. There's little rockets that you can put um, in here in the smokestacks that would fire out. So um, cool. I had this when I was a kid. I had one. This is a re- repop of the original box. And it's really cool. And, um, and you can display it. And I hope they do the green Hornet black beauty. And I hope they do. They did one James Bond car, but I hope they do um, the other one that had more gadgets on it. But this is a repro of the original box. Who put that out? Really, what, who's really it? Nice. Corgi. There's a. Okay, they're Corgi. still in okay. business. So, um, and and it there is enough difference that you can tell an original from, you know, whatever. But I like. It's like when Aurora redid the. Um, when Polar Lights did the Aurora stuff and put them out in the original boxes, um, uh-huh. that this kind of has that same feel. And Corgi toys were always expensive back in the day. Like this was a, I want to say it was a five or ten dollar thing back in '67 or whatever when it first came out. And even later on, they were ten and fifteen dollar, yeah, uh, toys. So they were not cheap. You know, they were like big Matchbox cars. They were not cheap. Um. And uh, so that's kind of fun just to have it. So when I was a kid, a little story I'll tell you about that Corgi car. Because <laughs> it got me in a little trouble. Oh, no. My did mom you had the, Did you have to go to the doctor tape. to have it removed or no, something? Or she had a brand... No, no. Not all of it. <laughs> um, My mom had these brand new tables that she loved. 
and we were going out somewhere. And I had my Corgi Batmobile in a bag. And I was swinging that bag in the living room, and the corner of that Batmobile fucking nailed the corner of that table and took a chunk out. <laughs> Until the day we got rid of those tables, that chunk was out of that. <laughs> How much beating did you catch for that? Uh, you know, I don't remember, but I'm sure it wasn't a good day. <laughs> to bring this back to last episode in our beating talk. Oh. Anything else you got in the mail? Um, You know, you did get, let's do it here now. You did get something in the mail. We we're going to save it for the voicemail section, but you did get this in the mail. Let me get there. You got this in the mail from our good friend. Your good friend, Jamie Sai. No one that sends me that is my good friend. <laughs> what is it, Scott? What did you get? I got a nasty foot. <laughs> is what I got. It flops around. A nasty big foot. Okay. With painted toenails. <laughs> painted toenails. His daughter painted the toenails for him. Oh, I love it. <laughs> her stepdaughter. I wasn't sure who. And uh, yeah, and that's filament printed for those that. You know, and that's yeah. really smooth for a filament print. That is it, really smooth. That looks great. That looks really cool. <laughs> yeah, and I got Godzilla kind of behind it going, what the fuck <laughs> is that? All right. I got I got my Medusa, and I'll have the... I got my Medusa. I didn't get a foot. I got a Medusa. Yes. I got my Medusa, in the, and the um, the unboxing video will be out shortly. I have, I have it filmed, but, man, once again, these Star Race things are super super cool and scott just to give you an idea how big it is before we move on here is sorry sneeze time here is the i'm main... allergic to your unboxing videos i know here's the main body and torso is there so kind of look at that nice fit too yeah it fits the seams are the seams hide really well you heat this up when you glue it you shouldn't really have much putting to do at all so Video will be out shortly. Check it out, everybody. There's some good stuff. The base, there's a little either. I, I think Brent called it poly resin. I thought it was cold cast porcelain. I don't know the difference. Is there a difference? You're, Somebody hey, explain. You're, you're the caster. I thought you know that. Yeah, I never used any of that shit. I hated okay. it. Yeah, it's. But it's a nice have. Like, I think it's worth the price. Completely worth the price. Produce is there. Bond boxing coming soon. All right. Topic. We're going to keep this short. Probably good. Uh, let, me, let me fix my neck a little bit. Okay. Seen any good posts on on the uh, on the Facebooks lately, Scott? Anything? Anything? Anything perk your interest? No. Okay. Well, I did a little. I thought I had an idea. And this is where it came from, and I just want people to kind of know. I want to defend myself a little bit because I felt it went completely in the wrong direction. Um, I wanted people to send in pictures of bad and good casting so that we could just say, hey, this is what's expected when you get a garage kit. This is what's expected when you get a 3D print. This is what would not be acceptable. This is what wouldn't be acceptable over here. And kind of just so people could know. And here's why. And this would be what was common, maybe. What like, was common. Uh, especially garage kits. Okay. Especially garage kits. And this is this. I don't want people to know my, my train of thought where this all came from, which was there. If you look at Facebook, there are tons of people selling their collection. There are a ton of old kits on the market right now. And so if you're a new person to this hobby which a lot of people like to think there aren't, but there actually are like quite a few people who are coming at it from the 3d print side of things. And especially if you're in a group like Jamie's, which is 3d prints and garage kits. If you join that as just a 3d print person and you might start to see, Hey, what are these garage kit things? They're pretty cool. And if someone's selling an old garage kit, you may end up with something that is completely different than what you've been getting nowadays as a model kit as a garage kit, and as a print. The things that are coming out now 
Mark Worthling, Paul, Paul Gill, like are pretty much put them together and paint them like anything from Brokaw. There's not a lot of cleanup. There's not a lot of mess. There's not a lot of seam lines, but if you're picking up something from way back when you might get a seam line and be like, well, this is terrible. But when you really think about it, that's just how it was. So I wanted people to kind of have a frame of reference as to what was okay. Like, as opposed to here's another world base for the Dr. Chenard kit that I built, which was, and the body itself, where you have billions upon billions of pinholes, you had tons of resin boogers, you had an offset base by about a half inch that you had to somehow figure out how to put together. That nowadays, no one would be like, this is okay. And that's what was my, <laughs> this was not meant as a, an attack on anyone. It was not meant as a, let's show who's putting out good work and who's putting out shoddy work. And I was planning on showing people how to fix those things. So if you did get a 3d print that had any sort of, uh, support marks or lines or like leaking resin or any like, like ways to fix those things. And if you got an old garage kit that had a seam or had a resin bubble or had pinholes, I was going to show people how to fix those things. But now, <laughs> since we had such a blowback, I kind of want to avoid it. But Kendall Conniff sent in, and I had one other person send in pictures, but I think Kendall's work perfectly. I just want people to see. This is an old garage kit. This is from Screamin'. And it's the old Betty Page kit, all right? The Betty Page in Orbit kit. So let me just go to this. This is the box. And when you open up that box, your old style garage kit made of resin, this is what you would have expected back then. And this is not, again, I'm not ragging on anyone's casting ability. I'm not ragging on how terrible it is. But if you do pick it up an old kit, this is what you're going to get is stuff like this where it does require sanding and it does require putty work and it does require, it is not a plug and paint. Like I think everyone has become accustomed to. And this is also um, from 1993. I think the box says, yes. Okay. So this is early garage kit. Okay. And I look at this kit, just a few things that I'm seeing here. Okay. And it's Go not to a that kit second I picture, Scott, go to the second yeah i am on the second okay. picture that's the one i'm on and it's this first of all it's not a kid i would buy okay. but i look at the castings that jerry uh not jerry i'm sorry kendall kendall sent okay and i look at these things in this piece and i go i i can honestly go yeah not the best castings but on the other hand i look at it and go it's buildable yeah. And it's just more work. And again, it's a model kit. Okay. And so, you know, it, it, and it's such a double edged sword because when it comes to 3D printing, if this was 3D printed, this would be completely unacceptable. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> as far as I'm concerned. Okay. <laughs> For a 1990s garage kit, this was acceptable. Like this the was, a, this, I would say this was closer okay. to the norm. Yeah. Than yeah. not. And I want and people to look just at that first picture on the left. If if I'm if people are looking at it the right way. The knee. You have a yeah. you have a poor what is that called? A spout? That's a poor spout. Poor spout. Poor spout. That you'd have to grind off. You have a seam that you'd have to sand off and putty. And you or also scrape. have you scrape that let me go off. full screen. Yeah, let me go full on that. You have air bubbles and pinholes in that same picture that would need to be putty and filled. So if you were to pick up something like this nowadays, someone might be shocked to see this. And this was my whole point. You shouldn't be. This is what it was like back then. So when you get mm -hmm. something like that and like this, this is all fixable, all buildable. But again, it's a model kit. And here's my next question I want to kind of ask. Scott, are you a... <laughs> this is the wrong person to ask. Do you find more enjoyment out of painting or building when you have done this in the past? I, I, for me, 
I love painting, I but I think painting, the most. Um, but the challenge sometimes of the build is fun. Um, you know what's what's cool about the build is you start out with a box of parts, and when you're done, you have something. Yeah. Okay. I love so, building. I love sanding. I love priming. Um, I love like I love yeah. the build part of it. I love building models. Love painting yeah. models. But I think I find my most rewarding part of it is actually the building part. You know. And now that that's kind of gone with printing because it's so easy, that's why mm. I find plastic models a little because it's it's almost like putting together a puzzle. It's the well, same see, and sort that's of the thing. So to me, styrene models are the worst. Yeah. Okay. And I and uh, yes, but and I get that it it touches styrene that part of my brain. Worst. Okay. But, this picture, uh, real quick, this picture, the next picture, Scott, this is something also I want people to realize. A lot of times, things were not keyed. They were just cut. So you'd have to make your own pin to hold that in place and center right. it. So you might come across a part like this that doesn't have a key. And so if you look at today's world, if a 3D printed printer guy went into this, He'd say, why isn't that whole arm piece just a separate piece that plugs into there? Okay. But these these pieces were cut for molding and casting reasons. Okay. Let's cut it here. This will make it easier to mold. Let's put the pore spout here. I can tell you exactly why they put the pore spout there. Because the gravity would take the resin down into the cavities and stuff that it needed to be. Where if it was somewhere else, it would have had to vent up. And, you know, so my guess is that's why the poor spouts on the knee. Again, I'm going to say nothing wrong with it. Back then, I think today people would do it different. Right. Um, I mean, up to, they, recently I found I had something that came with no key that was an arm cut, which is the hmm. worst place to cut an arm on a female kit is the middle of a, of a bicep area of an upper or arm, leg the, or yeah, like because the putting and making it. But that's how it was done so i again i'm not here to shame anyone and here's a leg picture same thing there's parts you're you, gonna have to grind off there's parts you're gonna have to sand but this is how it this works. is not the worst example i've ever seen no okay matter of fact this is i look at this and go it's a buildable kit R right it's just gonna need some work well, absolutely i would have picked up this kit back then and go okay yeah where's my dremel tool let's go whereas i think nowadays people are a lot more picky with their time and what they want to spend time doing. And most people are painters, I think, instead of builders at, at this point. And I don't know if it's still available, but if you can get your hands on David Fisher's first video, um, which is actually one through three on the DVDs, okay, he goes over how to pin things and, um, you know, so so that it's supported, so it's not just like this arm where this arm fits into the body on this particular piece. All you're gonna have to do is hit that with something that's gonna fall off. Yeah. Okay. So people would pin it. Again, people new to the hobby don't know this. Right. Okay. And then Kendall also sent us in pictures from our Atomic Creations, which is Thomas Kuntz, who we. Like one of these days I am going to reach out to, I, I wanted to wait till we kind of had enough shows under our belt before we totally embarrassed ourselves having uh -huh. Thomas on. So at some point I'm going to reach out to him. And again, this is not meant to shame his casting ability because this is one of his old Artomic Nosferatu pieces. And this is what you get. So if you're going to pick up one of these kits, expect to do some sanding, expect to do some flash removal, expect to have something. It is not meant to shame. I want people to know this is what you're getting when you get an old kit and the amount of work that it requires that it requires. Right. And I'm going to go to the hand picture that you have here. Yes. Yeah. Okay. And that's a pretty good seam on the hand, but nothing unworkable. No. Okay? And again, if you would have got this back in 1992 or 93, you'd be like, okay, right. cool. I'll sand it. But again, I'm also going to say you're not a caster. Try casting that hand with the things and all that. And even the box review we did on the Lugosi Dracula. They don't even do it in styrene. They just cut them. Yeah. And, you know, so, I mean, 
and, and when you look at it, all the nails came out. Okay, so I would look at this and go, yeah, that's not a bad casting because you take your exacto knife and scrape away at that seam and you probably lose most of it. Yeah. Okay. So again, again, I recommend Dave's first video for sure. Well, I recommend all David's videos if they're still available. And you know what? Maybe that's one thing I'll probably sit down at some point and do a show people how to do a pin, show people how to do a say like sanding off a, a seam like that. I had a putty one side of it. Um, the head, same thing. You had like maybe the corner of an ear might be missing or there might be a little seam behind a head. But this is what you get when you get an old garage kit. And this head was actually pretty good. Um, yes. Little and then real quick, this than... last picture, the flashing around these these pieces. That's an easy when you get something like that. That's just that's how it was. Whereas mm -hmm. nowadays and I can I will use a, our good buddy. As much as we rag on him, Mark Worthling has learned from the best, right? He has absolutely learned from Mark Brokaw. This is a piece that you would get nowadays from Mark and from it, like the, the Marks. This, you can't find a mold line. You can't find anything that needs to be sanded on this. Nothing. As far as the base, I mean, look at that bottom. I and mean, then this is what, there's nothing there. He's done the work, grind, ground off anything that needed to be ground off. There's not a visible mold line really anywhere on this piece because it is the one piece, but still there's no resin boogers that need to be cleaned out. There's no, nothing's wrong with this. It is a plug and play. And this is what I think most people are used to now to, whereas if you go back in time, you're going to have to do some work to make things look good. And that's right. all I wanted to do. And it blew up. So for people that commented in that thread, thank you. For the people that kind of got what I was going for, thank you. And for people that didn't get what I was going for, I'll, I will try harder next time to be a little more clear. A little more clear in what I was trying to do. And again, I it did not mean to shame anyone or make a company look bad or anything like that. And that was not my intent. So I am sorry for that. But. It was, like it was frustrating. It was frustrating to see <laughs> everything say. new that comes out. Okay. Like, like I know, um, I know Paul pretty well. I know if Paul pours something that he's not happy with, he fixes it before he sends it out. Yeah. Okay. Or he just throws it to the side and he'll fix it later and say, yeah, here we clean this up, you know? Yeah. Um, and, and should and more I people know, do that? Yes. But then there's also, at what the the I don't know how to even say this the willingness of a produ of a producer to spend more time on something varies dramatically. I was at a show years ago. Ed Bulk, I'm going to call out Ed Bulkley because he don't watch anyway. Okay, and he was selling his uh, House of Frankenstein was the kit, and it was Karloff and the monster in quicksand. And so you had Karloff's hand was kind of up, or the monster's hand was kind of up. And there was a spot in the elbow that. Whenever he poured them, it was an air air pocket. Okay, so Ed would take putty and and fill them. Yeah. Okay, you know to make it right. So he sold one at the show, and this guy comes back and says, Ooh, crying about, well, you you puttied this, you know, and and you know was kind of crying about it. So Ed said to the guy, "Let me see the kit." The guy handed him the kit. Ed handed him the kit back, and said, "Yeah, here you don't need it," and just. Took it away from him because he was just so <laughs> aggravated that the guy, you know, had fixed the problem. Yeah. Okay. And um, that's where we started to give Ed the uh, no kit for you kit Nazi uh, <laughs> thing. It's funny as hell. But, um, you know, it, it's, and I think we should do an episode. I still think we should do an episode on 3D stuff because yes. the 3D stuff has a separate set of problems okay and a few of the problems that have kind of reared their head to me and again i'm not going to call anybody out because i know the one guy is working on the problem and, and made it right um leaching resin okay and um stress marks um splitting okay you should not, okay, 
where I'll look at that resin kit and say, you're a modeler, work it out. Okay. When it comes to 3D printing, yeah, I might say that about support divots. Yes. Okay. Because that's a necessary evil on the 3D prints sometimes. But I'm not going to say it. If that, if that piece has split, it's not going to stop splitting. Okay. It's going to keep splitting because it's a layer. All right. And it's going to keep splitting. And if there's resin in there trapped somewhere, it's it's going to be trapped. And I think a lot of it is just guys don't know that are getting into this. And um, I, I'm gonna I'm gonna quote a producer that I know that basically says, "Yeah, every swinging dick in the world gets a printer now wants to be a producer, and that's fine. But before you start sending stuff out, you need to." Um, you need to learn to look what what to look for when you get these files because sometimes it's I don't want to say it's not their fault because they should catch it, but they're just not educated enough. But when you have a resin pocket in something and you run it through the slicer, you should be able to see it. And I remember when Mark Worthling just got into this, um, I would do a Discord with him. And he was getting some files that were, I'm going to say, subpar. And I would run them through the slicer, and I would zoom in on stuff, and I would show him, see, Mark, this isn't good. This won't print this way. Or yeah. this will print, and it will have a hollow area. So maybe we'll do an episode on it, or maybe we'll do a, just a separate video on yeah, it. Yeah, I, I want to do a separate and It's toy. not to call anybody out. It's to make everybody better, because here is here's, here wherein lies the problem to me. Okay, if guys start getting stuff that is a bad experience for them, okay, and they don't know how to fix it, okay, all right, there's two things that need to happen. The beauty of 3D printing is it's real easy to make them another piece, okay, just here, here's another piece, I fixed it, here, you know, it's beautiful and hopefully it's inexpensive in the, in the grand scheme of things. But the second thing um, they need to do then is correct this problem so it doesn't keep happening. Because what happens is the guys, and, and I'm certainly not tooting my own horn, I'm not an expert. Okay, Jason is, but I'm not. But um, there's guys out there, okay, that I don't hear complaints about. Okay, and and um, New York 3D Creations, uh Jason prints stuff. I print stuff. Jamie Sai prints stuff for people. Okay. And I haven't heard a single complaint anybody on their stuff. Okay. Other guys, I have heard. It. Okay. Uh, Mark Worthling, too. Mark, Mark's caught on really well. Okay. In, in that, yeah. you know, he, he, you know, I showed him about resin traps and stuff like that because, and he was fortunate because his first files that he got were kind of messed up. And I was able to help show what needed to be done, which also showed that sculptor. This is a problem, too. You have guys that sculpt that don't know about... Which we covered again, a little we, bit we, last we time with, yeah. with, with it, Ed and Airtight. Eric. Yeah. Okay. Watertight. Okay. So it's... um, You get what you pay for, sculpt-wise, sometimes. And these guys got to learn. Um, you know, but what happens is when this stuff happens, if it keeps happening on a regular basis, because 3D printers get more affordable and stuff, and then these guys join these Patreons and they can they get the right to print, which is fine. Okay. But when guys start getting stuff that's leaking resin or uh, splitting or or has yeah. what I call stretch marks in it. We'll have to show examples of that. Um, it makes it bad for the rest of us that are doing yeah. it work. Okay. And and it gives the whole 3D printing thing a bad rap. And you don't want to do that. It's still too young to do that. Because if it starts to get a bad rap, it'll never catch on. Um, so that's all we wanted to kind of cover. I, it, whatever, we'll figure it out. Like I said, it's gotta be a short episode this time. Let's head over to 
emails, voicemails, and corrections, which we don't have any emails. We have some voicemails. We and do. Scott, I haven't even listened to them. I just downloaded them. Don't okay. know what they are. They could be insanity. They could be terrible. Right. They could be so I have, to, I have to mute so I can listen. So you right. go ahead. Tell me when to go. To email number one at the top of the page. Hi, this is Old Goat Magazine. Since you turned 50, you automatically rolled into the Old Goat Magazine for 50 and above. You get a magazine. You get a fanny pack full of goodies and all kinds of stuff like wipes. That, Extra pair of underwear, Lumi, a Depends diaper for emergency, and breast mints in case you smell like awful dead fish. What? Have a wonderful day, Mr. Walker. Enjoy your senior discount, too. Big 5-0. Bye. Oh, uh, oh, boy. Okay. I get some free Lumi? That's nice. All and right. a fanny bag. Okay. <laughs> All right. Voicemail number two. Cond. Evil dead too. is coming for you, Jason. While your soul. We have, I think, an incantation was placed upon me. And in the third voicemail, there we go. This one's for Scott. Is Scrappy Do a midget? Midget man? Is he a genetic offset? Or a dwarf dog that's got a human voice but a dog head? I don't understand that. As a kid, I don't understand why they had a talking little midget dog, and the rest of them were just to stand there. He acted like he was superior. He was a real bitch. So I'd like to know from Scott, is Scrappy do a midget dog experiment in lab or a guy in a costume or what? Bye. I like that kind of, I like that voicemail. That is a good question. What is Scrappy do? <laughs> Scrappy do is something I have after a bad pizza. Um. <laughs> anyway, uh, that's. I stopped watching Scooby Doo before Scrappy came around. <laughs> okay. Why does? How? Yeah. How come Scrappy doesn't have the same speech impediment that Scooby does? He can walk on two legs, no problem. Well, so I think Scrappy was a cross between a Chihuahua and a Great Dane. <laughs> And uh, the Chihuahuas maybe have a better vocal ability than the big Great Danes that are just big doofuses. I got to so, see. I, I want to see video of this insemination because, man, brutal. I mean, <laughs> that's pretty good. You know, plus, Scooby Doo was high all the time. Okay. Him and Shaggy, he was having. THC yeah, yeah, maybe he was mumbling because of that. So, you know, where Scrappy was probably on, like, speed or something, so he could talk really fast and good, you know. Yeah. Oh, man. That would be All my right. explanation. All right, that's the show, everybody. We have a short one, sorry. Too much stuff going on, and again... Whoa, 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 whoa. What? Whoa. Whoa. What? What? Whoa. What? Whoa. What? Please don't say we have a short one. If you want to say you have a short one, that's fine. Okay. Your mom don't think I have a short oh, one? Oh, okay. All right. Okay. <laughs> I do have a short one. Um, it, if we do not have an episode coming at the end of the month, we will let you know. But as of right now, it is going to be... It's very up in the air because of scheduling. Um, but thank you, everyone, for sticking with us. It's episode 102. The giveaways. Uh, if you would like the body snatcher, Scott, what did they have to say? Forgot. What did I say? I don't know either. I want to snatch your body. That's it. That's what it was. I want to snatch your body. And to win the baseball fury from Jerry Fraid, something about baseball will get you. Give us your World Series uh, winner prediction or, or if you stopped watching whatever you want to say about baseball. Yeah, whatever. Or if you hate baseball, let us know why you hate baseball. Yeah. There we go. We have a ton for the gallery. Thank you, everyone, for sending stuff in. Lots of good stuff following here. Thank you, everybody. We'll see you next time. Episode 103. Take care. Say goodbye, Scott. Closing in on the end. Maybe. Bye.
your pile gone. Piles. Remember when they used to call it hemorrhoid piles? You never heard of that, did you? Dude, my hemorrhoid is... I think they fucked me up, man. They blew out my O-ring. Why, are you shitting your pants? No, like... It ain't just... a leakage? What? what what's going bloody on? Bloody mess. It's a bloody mess down there. <laughs> Fucking colon oh, What? <laughs> Fuck me up. What did they do to your hemorrhoid exactly? I have no idea. Well, they said they took one out, but I think they made a new one <laughs> on their way out. Oh, boy. I got both I didn't have any open. problems before I had that colonoscopy. None. Not like this. That's why you don't let people in there. Okay? <laughs> it's like letting you on my computer. All right? Aren't you glad you're back? I'm glad I recorded that. that that's a good. What? <laughs> good in the... Okay, I have a nice shirt on. The neck's not stretched out. I hate it. I love my neck stretched out. Going to the doctor tomorrow. Which doctor? Just the normal uh, yearly. Get my prescriptions renewed. Tell me I'm a fat ass doctor. Oh. Tell me I'm overdue for a colonoscopy, and now I'm going to say. Yeah, my friend went in. Now he's got piles. Okay. <laughs> they butchered my butthole. Here we go. Moving those. Yes, piles. <laughs> piles is a slang term for hemorrhoids. Really? Oh. oh, here's some other one. Roids, bumps in the alley, back tassels, dirty gump drop, packing bananas, yule log, hemorrhoids, anal cauliflower. <laughs> Scarlet Pumpkin. Scarlet Pumpkin. <laughs> Mangisil. You need to put some Mangisil on it. <laughs> I did. <laughs> Fatal Strudel. Truck Stop Breakfast. Oh my God. Purple truck, Peanuts. Truck Stop Quarter. Breakfast. <laughs> Corduroids. Uh, rim Bumpers. Raspberry Ring. Oklahoma Muds. <laughs> Hibs, body rocket, spelunk kumquats, hemo shark, hateroids, homeroid, and anal labia. Oh, wait, there's more even. Pig knuckles, <laughs> smegnoid, trucker's knuckles, anal mouse, computeroids, hammeroid, anal dremorage, itchy barnacles, <laughs> chocolate peanut bush, peanut bush, combat rim, shemeroid. Oh my god, back tassels. Anal cauliflower, I think, is my favorite one. Mangisil. Put some mangisil on your anal cauliflower. <laughs> oh, my God. I love it. 